Hello, everyone. Welcome to week three of our APL Readers Corner. Um, I'm Nicole. I have a special guest today, Jordan. She is going to talk about Is She New With Me by Blake Pierce. Um, so with Reader's Corner, every week we do a review of a book that we chose on Hoopla because that way it was available for both readers and patrons alike. And um, that way if you wanted to read along with us, you can. We all got to pick the book I picked for this week uh, because I'm a big fan of mystery thriller, which was the genre theme for this week. Um, and we'll kind of keep doing this every week until uh, the library uh, opens up again. Everyone can join in. You can ask questions during our live feed right now. Jordan will be monitoring the comments, so she can alert me if we have a question or you guys just want to give a shout out to us. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get started. So this week, uh, we're going to be looking at murder mystery thrillers, which is one of my favorites. Um, one of the definitions for a mystery is uh, a genre of literature whose stories focus on a puzzling crime, situation, or circumstance that needs to be solved. These stories can either be fictional or non-fictional and can focus even on both supernatural and non-supernatural topics. Many mystery stories involve what they call a whodunit scenario, meaning the mystery revolves around uncovering a culprit or criminal. Now, thriller, um, the definition for that is a genre of literature whose primary feature is that it induces strong feelings of excitement, anxiety, tension, suspense, fear, and other similar emotions in its readers or viewers. So in other words, it thrills the audience. So you got mystery, which is a puzzle, and thrill, which is kind of like a roller coaster ride, keeps you going up and down. Some common themes or characteristics of these genres for the uh, elements of mystery. They have, they start with a baffling crime, a motivated singular investigator, the hidden killer. There's a cover up, the discovery and elimination of suspects, evaluating of the clues, where they sift the true from the untrue, and eventually the identification and apprehension of the, of the killer. For thriller, the, um, a devastating crime is about to be committed or has been committed with the threat of an even worse one in the wings. The perpetrator is known, but his guilt is not absolutely certain, or the hero wishes not to accept the truth of his guilt. The uncertainty is what enhances the suspense. Um, and finally, the hero is under constant attack as he or she tries to definitely prove the perpetrator's guilt and or stop the next atrocity. So we are looking at the book, If She Knew by Blake Pierce. Uh, for those who have never heard of it before or ever read it, this is actually book one of seven in the series. They call it the Kate Wise Mystery. It's about a 55-year-old freshly retired FBI agent, Kate Wise, who is loathing her freed up days and offers to help investigate the murder of her friend's daughter who was killed alone in her house while her husband was away. As Kate digs deeper into this murder, bodies start to pile up and there's a possible serial killer on the loose. Uh, something interesting both Jordan and I found, uh, Blake Pierce is a female author. Um, there are two Blake Pierces. She is one and the other is actually a male. She is a USA Today bestselling author of the Riley Page Mystery Series, which has 16 books and counting. I guess she's having some more coming up in the next couple years. She is also the best-selling author of 10-plus mystery thriller series, which includes The Kate Wise Mystery. They say she's an avid reader and a lifelong fan of the mystery thriller genre. Some reviews about this book. Overall, it got about an average of 3.5 to 4. We'll kind of get into why. Um, but overall, a pretty good a pretty good rating for a book like this. Um, a lot of people enjoyed the murder aspect of it and the investigative, um, the investigative points that she uses. So I guess we can get right into it. Jordan, what did you think about this book? So really, 
my thing with the book was that I felt kind of disjointed, but I really did enjoy it overall. It, I, I could imagine myself reading it like on the beach. Like it would be a nice vacation read, I think. Yeah, um, just because it was one. like the prose was really easy to understand and it was just genuinely fun. Uh, but I think so it was confusing how she got to her conclusion. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely can agree on that one. It felt like you had pointed earlier that there was supposed to be a lot of, in a lot of good mystery books, there's a lot of red herrings. So as you, as the investigator starts to unravel all the clues and point out um, some things that were hidden to, to the eye, so to speak, um, when they come up, you start to realize, oh yeah, so that's where they got it. I felt towards the end it was like here's the killer here's why bam and i'm like really i did not i didn't even have a killer in mind yet um right. we, we can get into that too um there especially when we start talking about if it fits some of the genre themes um but overall was it something you normally would have picked for yourself it wasn't i would not have picked this for my it was totally worth reading uh, because it did get me out of my comfort zone. And I think that's what's great about Reader's Advisory is that we're all here, like, learning new genres that we wouldn't usually pick during this kind of crazy time. Yeah, no, I'm glad for a mystery thriller that I picked that you ended up enjoying. I wasn't sure what I was going to think of it, I just saw that it was categorized as thriller mystery. So I was like jumping on board. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised as well. Um, I'm not, sh I'm thinking about possibly continuing into the rest of that series. Um, but I also have a lot of to be read books in my list. I'm sure as you do as well. Um, yes, you can't work at the library and not bring home books every two seconds. I've, no, 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 definitely not. Um, so one of my other things was, do we think it fits some of those genres themes? So in the murder elements, there's the baffling crime. So we start with the murder of Julie Hicks alone in her home while her husband was out of town. We got the motivated investigator, former FBI agent Kate Winters, who I don't know if you knew this, but she's freshly retired. Um, that's the big <laughs> joke there. Times. They might have mentioned she's retired a little bit. There's the hidden killer, which, spoiler alert, I'm not going to say just yet, but there's a hidden killer. Uh, there's a cover-up. So there's actually the framing of a gym trainer uh, right towards the end. And right away, there was a red flag for me. I was like, no, I don't think he was it. Um, there's the discovery and elimination of suspects. As Kate Wise is kind of going through the murders that were eventually piling up of the different housewives, she found that the trainer Julio didn't really fit the profile or his personality didn't really fit the type of crimes that were being committed. Um, that was definitely good as she's kind of going through it and she's going, no, I, cause she's, she's sacked, I think 20, 25 killers at this point. So she starts to understand the mind of a killer and can kind of see in their eyes, at least if they're, if they're a would be, actual killer or not um and obviously julio definitely wasn't he was just as shocked as everyone else was by some of the uh some of the evidence that was left behind um eventually you identify and apprehend the killer it was one of the husbands spoiler um however i didn't find it as convincing um, like we had said before, one of the big things in mysteries is that there are red herrings, there are hidden clues that you don't catch until the end and when the investigator starts to explain the crime a little more. And during mysteries like this, I always try to start thinking about the different characters that have come into play and would one of them have been the killer and he just didn't stand out to me as a killer and it felt like he was created as the killer right at the end yes um, i definitely agree i think he um should have had more of those red herrings honestly yeah yeah it just it there was not enough up to let you figure it out on your own you know what i mean yeah 
yeah, there just wasn't enough for me to, as soon as she started going that aspect, it was like, mm, I don't know. You you haven't, you haven't gotten me. Um, there are definitely a little bit of thriller elements. I think this is definitely a big mystery book with a little bit of thriller because some of the elements of thrillers are a devastating crime is about to be committed or has been committed. So obviously there were the murders of the housewives piling up. You got Julie Hicks, then you got Lacey Thurmond, and eventually you got Taylor Woodward. And there was um, talk of the fourth one, I think, which was Megan Hunter, I think. I was trying to remember all the names, but those three I definitely remembered. Um, the next was the perpetrator was known, and obviously they were trying to showcase that it was Julio the trainer, but ultimately he didn't fit that profile or his personality didn't fit the acts of the crimes committed. There was, it, there like Kate, like Kate had kind of described, there was... It was acts of passion while acts of rage at the same time, and the trainer didn't really fit that profile. While there's been a lot of secrets that we started uncovering of these housewives, that they all were in somewhat involved in affairs, either they themselves or their husbands. So it would definitely have to be someone closer to, in order to enact that act of, um, act of love or act of rage. Um, yeah, um, like those crimes of passion. Crimes of passion, yes, yes, I was trying to find that word. Perfect. Um, and then ultimately right at the end, which I did agree with, the hero is under constant attack as he or she tries to definitely prove the perpetrator's guilt and stop the next atrocity. She is a retired agent. She is constantly going against her superior orders of to kind of take a step back. She's able to help with this crime and investigate it further, but they're still kind of having some sort of leash on her because she is retired. She no longer is a part of the agency. Um, and she is also 55 years old, so she could get hurt. Um, not saying that no, you know, a regular FBI agent who isn't 55 year old, years old can't get hurt, but she's also been out of the game for almost a year. So that can definitely yeah. take into account. There was also that last scene where Kate starts to realize Julio is definitely not the killer and that this husband is starting to show small acts of rage as she continues to question him. And in the back of her mind, she is constantly going, I should, I should sit this one out and wait for backup. She is constantly having that battle in her mind where I want to apprehend the killer, but I also should probably get some backup. This could end badly. And ultimately, spoiler, it, it does for the most part. And she's lucky that uh, she didn't get hurt even more than she already did. So it was... <laughs> I can definitely see some thriller elements into this mystery, but overall, I do agree that it is a mystery. However, like Jordan had said, we needed some more red herrings. I would have liked some more jabs that this husband or whoever it could have been was giving clues that they were the ones committing these murders. It just it seemed to wrap up pretty quickly in a nice little bow. And while I do like that at the end, I needed more. I, I was definitely underwhelmed. I needed more. I needed more clues. I needed to be convinced that he was the killer. Um, yeah, I think I would have preferred if she went by more of a classic murder mystery trope. Um, like the themes are all there, but I would have liked to see more of that build up to go, like that mystery build up to go along with the tension of the thriller aspects of it. Yeah, I love, I love the, you know, I love it's a roller coaster. So yeah, just like you said, you need that build up for me to really stick with you and for me to really believe that you are on you're on the track to finding that killer and then you can have some twists and turns along the way but yeah you definitely need that building up suspenseful moments and i there were definitely some but towards the end there were just wasn't enough for me um but overall it was good there was actually a lot of reviews we both agreed that there was a lot of reviews about that where it was just it ended too quickly there wasn't convincing there were no clues and um the 
the point was made multiple times that she was retired. She was retired. She was retired. She hasn't been in the, you know, she's been out of the agency for a year. She's bored. She's reading true crime novels. Like we, you know, so she's, she's retired. She, she wants to get back in the game clearly, which she is good at. There's no doubt in my mind. She is a great investigator. Um, so that brings me to a couple questions I actually had for you, Jordan. So do you okay. think, um, Kate's judgments or actions would be any different if she was still an active FBI agent and not retired? I do think they would be different because she would have the support of her superior officers more because that's kind of a tension in the book that happens. Uh, and then I think she also may not have been so singularly, excuse me, singularly uh, focused on the case had she been juggling the load of a full-time FBI agent. So I think she really put more of herself into a specific case because of being retired. You know, like it became personal to her. Yeah, and it, it seems like I could understand she's been doing it, I think it, they said 30 years. So she started yeah. when she was 25 in the FBI, and 30 years of constant investigations, murders after murders, and then for her to just stop and not do anything, that's got to be incredibly hard, you know. Um, so for me though, I just felt like they should have been different because she was retired. I felt her actions, she should have been a little more apprehensive because she isn't in the agency anymore. She was asked to come in, you know, as a side job or whatever. So you, you would almost, as a, as a normal person being out of the game and asking to become to come back in you would just there's my cat uh you would just um you would be a little bit apprehensive and you know she's also like we didn't mention but she's a grandmother you yeah. know her daughter just had a baby and they mentioned it a couple times but you would almost think like you you know there's another life at you know, there's a other, another life here and you need to be careful if you want to be in that life. So I just, I wish you would have been a little more apprehensive, but you know what? I get it. I watch a lot of true crime shows. You can't just stop being who you are, you know? Um, uh, I also think it's important that we note that her husband had died, spoilers. And that that's what kind of drove her out of the FBI, maybe a little bit too early, I think she says in the books. I think she had like a year or two left before she actually could retire. Mm -hmm. Actually, that that was my next question was, how did, oh. how did you think the death of her husband, Michael, impacted her life and ultimately her job as an agent? I really think it's why she left at first just to emotionally deal with it, but then she finds that she can't. So she ends up just throwing herself into these side projects, a side case. And I think it really inhibits her looking at husbands as killers. I think she kind of is like, oh, well, you know, I'm trying to think how to describe it. But I know in one part of the book, she says, my daughter's husband is a good enough man. He's not good enough for her, but he's good enough. Like no one kind of compares to her husband like it, at all. She just has him on like a pedestal. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, there's that aspect of they didn't find his killer. Right. It's an unsolved murder. Um, and so, yeah, you know what? Actually, as you're saying that, I was kind of going back where every time she saw the husband, um, whether he was distraught or not after finding out his wife was murdered, each time she's like, nope, it's not him. Nope. Yeah, it's not him. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't want to. Yeah. She doesn't want to admit that it most most often than not, it's the husband. Um, but she ended up did going back and in, um, interviewing a case where there was that guy in the Swinger's house where he committed all those crimes and it's because his wife left him for another husband. Right. Um, and so I thought maybe that would have changed her mind that, you know, not every husband can be like yours was, um, you know, sometimes they, they snap, sometimes, you know, things happen. Um, but yeah, that was really interesting. <laughs> um, 
we didn't mention this as well, but Kate's daughter, Melissa, wants to um, kind of follow in her mom's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Why do you think she would want to follow in her mom's footsteps, knowing she has a daughter, her dad, the way he died, and kind of seeing how her mom probably dealt with a lot of those different murders and everything? That's got to take a toll on someone. To me, it seemed more... Like she was coming from a place of healing trauma. Like for all the reasons you said, except instead of turning away from all that, she was deciding to face it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I just genuinely felt like it was more supposed to be like a cathartic moment in the book. Okay. Yeah, I like I like where you're going with that. I didn't think about that. That's why I wanted to ask that question because mm -hmm. I'm not in that line of work i don't know anyone in that line of work so i guess i wouldn't i wouldn't understand their line of thinking why they would want to enter that especially considering all the things that they have going on in their life right now but that was good did you have any questions you want to ask before we wrapped up jordan um yeah i had one question i wanted to mention awesome i was wondering if, if you thought because of the style of writing how we both thought blake pierce was a male author if that more masculine or rather um in between tone she takes in the writing prose was an intentional um to the word, an intentional style to appeal to more readers Ooh. Yeah, I would definitely think so. As as they were going, you know, we had kind of mentioned, you know, the way she um, kind of, you know, depicted these housewives and stuff. I definitely was not expecting it to be um, a female author. However, I know that a lot of female authors in the literary world do kind of have to take their books and make it almost... Um, non-gender specific um right and or even like some of them uh have to abbreviate their names or they go under pen names um i don't i don't think blake pierce is her pen name but it also i guess i didn't see blake as a female name um just right. it wasn't it wasn't you know registering to me that it was a female but I guess if you look at all of her um, her series they all revolve around a female character that's true so that now that I know that she is a female author that kind of changes my perspective of her writing style and I can kind of right. see it but I do maybe you know I know also a lot of editors and publishers you know have a lot of say in sometimes their writing style so maybe that got changed so that it could like you said have the potential to get more readers not just one niche you know not just one of those you know not just the ladies who love true crime but maybe also appeal um to uh the male uh to the <laughs> to the male's perspective as well um but yeah that's that was good yep. you're Oh. oh, did I disappear? <laughs> you disappeared, but that's okay. We are actually wrapping up anyway. It's because my device is dying. Um, oh, there you are. <laughs> Yay! Um, so this wraps up this week of our APL Readers Corner. Um, please check out next Monday at 10 a.m. the story time. Monday, uh, April 13th, the theme is going to be Pete the Cat. Uh, last night, um, one of our fellow librarians, Brandon, was featured on the news about how Aurora Public Libraries are still impacting um, readers and patrons outside of the library. So that was pretty awesome. Go, Brandon. Um, but please keep checking out their story times. They have been doing a wonderful job. It is so inviting and they are just, I can't say enough about our fellow librarians. They are just awesome. And um, check out next week's APL Reader's Corner where they we are going to review a classic Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. So I hope you guys all tune in. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much, Jordan, for sitting in. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and reading the book with me. It was awesome. So thank you, everyone. See ya.